What are we in English? We are on Daf Yud Zayin Amud Aleph. Right at the two dots. Al Hadishona. Okay, if you're following the art school, it's 17A1. And the first bracha, you remember we have uh, this, the conclusion of each bracha is like, we lengthen it and we apply, we say, the one that answered this Tamil Chacham, this Tzadik, he should also answer us. Misha'anat Abraham. Okay? Now, Tana, Yesh Machlifim. There are some that switch Eliyahu and Shemuel. So in other words, we, we learned earlier that you have Eliyahu connected with one, with the first one, and uh, Shemuel connected with Tifilah. So the, and, and there's another opinion in the Tanaim that they would switch it. Shmuel, it says by him both an expression of Tifila and an expression of Tzaka, two different Pesukim. Therefore, it's not a big deal uh, to have this new opinion that switches Shmuel uh, to Tifila or to Tzaka. However, says the Gemara, Ela Gabe Eliyahu, Tifila Ktiv. It says about it says Tifila by Eliyahu, but it does not say uh, the Pasuk does not say Tzaka. It says the Gemara, Aneni Hashem Aneni Lashon Tzakahu. The Gemara gives an example that uh, Eliyahu said, Aneni Hashem Aneni, by uh, Hara Carmel, answer me Hashem, answer me. So since he said those words, Aneni Hashem Aneni, that's enough to be considered a calling out, a, uh, a Tzaka, and therefore we can understand why, even though it doesn't say expressly, Vayitzak Eliyahu, we would therefore say, Baruch Shomea Tzaka, uh, blessed is he who answers the tzaka, the call uh, of the calling out of Eliyahu. Okay, let's continue. Ala shishit. On the sixth bracha, who omer misha anayet yona, he who answered yona. Ala shivit who omer mi shanaet David, he who answered David. Es gemara michti. Hold up. Let's uh, let's try and understand. Yona bata David ushilam Mohava. Yona, right? Uh, just um, uh, uh, chronologically. He comes after the time of David and Shilomo. My ta'ama, how come you would put uh, Yonah before Maktim Leberesha? Why does he appear in the Berachot uh, before David and Shilomo? So you have, he's in the Beracha of the sixth Beracha. Answers the Gemara, Mishun Debay Lemecha Lemechatem Merachem Al Aretz. Because since the last Beracha we want to be uh, ending with is Merachem Al Aretz, that blessed is God. Who has mercy on the land? Because that's what we're trying to kind of communicate during a ta'anit, where the, there's a drought, there's fasting, there's a, sorry, there's a, a, there's no food. So therefore, since that beracha is associated with David and Shilomo, we'll go out of order to have that be the beracha that we end up uh, with saying. Fine. Okay. The Gemara now goes according to another Tana. Tana Tana taught explained Mishum Sumchus Amru in the name of Sumchus we learned. He was what that's the name of the rabbi, Sunchus. Baruch Mashpil Haramim. Blessed is he who brings down, who humbles Haramim, those that are arrogant. So he, according to that opinion, that he changes uh, the, the final beracha to end with those words. Shalosh Ta'aniyot Arishonot. The first three Ta'anit, the Gemara continues in the Mishnah. The first three Ta'aniyot, and Shem Mishmar Mit Anim Lomashtimim. The members, the people of the Mishmar, they fast, but they don't complete the fast. They fast a little, but they don't continue. And already we went through the people of the Mishmar, the people that are on duty, the people that are off duty, if you remember, if you remember how we described it before. So, we discussed specifically uh, whether or not they're allowed to fast, whether they're allowed to drink wine, depending on how immediate the need was for them in the Beit HaMikdash. Now we're going to discuss this specific uh, element, the second element that we talked about. Tan Rabbanan. Why did we say that the people of the Mishmar are allowed to drink wine by Lelot, They're allowed to drink wine in the nighttime, but not during the daytime. What's the reason? See, so in the Mishmar, there was different Bate Avot. So different families within each Mishmar. So 24 Mishmarot, right? And then you'd have broken up the Bate'av, each one uh, during their time. 
So if you have the Beit Av, first the Beit Av is, is on duty today. And, you know, I'm from another Beit Av. I'm Anshe Mishmar, I'm not Anshe Beit Av. Why can't I drink during the daytime and why can't I drink at night? If I can't, if I can, it should be Asur for the night. And if I can, it should be Mutar in the day. And the Gemara answers, Shema Tichbada Avoda Anshe Beit Av. We're worried that maybe there won't be enough Kohanim. There'll be too many sacrifices and they'll need to call in the reserves. And then, it's during the day, you might be drunk. You'll be called, you in, you're going to enter into the Beit HaMikdash. Shtu Yeyayin. We actually just read about it in the parasha. A Kohen is not allowed to come to the Beit HaMikdash when he's drunk. The punishment is, uh, is uh, unmentionable, terrible. So therefore, the Avobi Yisrael, and they'll have to come in a system and they'll be drunk. So therefore, why, why do we allow them uh, to do it at night? So why do we allow them to do it at night? At nighttime, as we explained, there's very there's a relatively small amount of work, and not only that, we would know already from the daytime whether or not we would need them. If we don't need them, there's not going to be new korbanot popping up in the nighttime. So therefore, in the nighttime they're allowed to, but it's during the daytime that we're worried that they might be called on uh, as as reserves. And shevet av, but the people of the, of the that are on duty specifically on that time, lo bayom lo balayla, not in the day and not at night. How come? So why don't we use the same idea? Nation asukim tamid ba'avoda because the people of that day are on the whole time. They might be on specifically uh, in in the korbanot of the day. They might be on hekter murin at night, but they're on. Mikan amiru. We learn from here. Kol kohen shemakir mishmarato mishmeret betav. Any kohen who is able to say, "This is the mishmar that I'm from. This is the mishmar of my." Uh, the, of, this is the specific Bishmar Bet Av that I'm a part of. And he knows specifically, you know, that uh, his Bet Av, that the plate that the family he comes from, was specifically put in that uh, in that space in this on this day. He's not allowed to drink wine if he knows that that he's going to be on duty and that's coming up. He's not allowed to drink wine. Kol to ayom. Bimakir mishmarto. What if he is able, he knows which Mishmar is part of. But he's therefore, um, he's unable to identify which Bet Av, which particular Bet Av he's a part of. So he knows he's part of the overall turn, but not specifically which day. So in that case, he knows for sure that his Bet Avot was there it's a, is established there in the temple. But he doesn't know specifically which day of the week. Then he's not allowed to drink wine the whole Shabbat because it was divided, as we said, into a two week periods. And it's also divided into week periods. And it's also divided into daily periods. So if I know, I know which day I am. If I don't know, I know at least, I know at least which weeks I am. Okay? Um, or at least I know which two weeks I am. Because I know that I'm part of uh, my this is per specific bit up, but I don't know which day is my turn. So therefore, the whole week he's not allowed to drink. Because we're not sure which is his day. What if he doesn't know uh, his mishmar, the which group he's in, and he doesn't know which family group he's in? But he knows that they're on, they're in this cycle. He's not allowed to drink wine at any time whatsoever. Because at any time, it could actually be that he's really on. So this guy, if he wants to drink, he best find out which mishmar, which mishmar bet av, etc., etc. Rebbe Omer, Rebbe says, Omer ani asur lishtot yain leolam. I would say that this guy who doesn't know, right, uh, 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 sorry, this person who knows mishmar bet av and... and he knows Mishmai knows Mishmai Av, but should be asur to drink wine at any time. Aval ma'e se shetakanato kalkalato that um, the reason why uh, the the reason why this person is able to drink wine is because of the fact that he's mikulkal. Let's see exactly what that means. Rashi says he explains Rebbe's position. Look at Rashi. Rashi says. <clears throat> Rebbe Omer, the second wide line, okay? You see it, the second wide line of Rashi? Yeah, middle of the line. Yeah. 
Sorry, let's let's start one rush. Let's start one rushy back. Four lines up in the narrow lines. Ve'en yodea me'ezeh betav. De'achshav eno makir be'ezeh yom b'shabbat ovdin. Ve'yodea shibatei avotav kivuin asur kol otash kol otosh shabbat mesveka b'chulu garsina ve'yodea shibatei avotav kivuin hen. De'en yodea shibatei avotav kivuin la'avod mutaru lishtot yain kol hashana v'lo chayshin et shema shema yibane shema yavne b'shem betav shelo yavdu ayom. Okay. Rebbe Omer, what does Rebbe say? Omer ani kohen asu klomar ichai shinan. If we're worried for this, uh, for this uh, maybe, right? Yeh asu leolam, it should be asu forever. Afil amakir mishmarato mishmeret bet avotav. The chai shinan, because we're worried. Shema yishtana seda mishmarot. Maybe they'll change the mishmarot, right? Because they would not, they weren't always necessarily set in their like by the calendar. Shema yavdu. Maybe they would all wind up being on service in one specific day. And then this guy will have to be on service. What should I do? The fact that maybe it will be rebuilt. We're not worried about. <clears throat> now, this idea that we're worried about the fact that the Beit HaMikdash might be rebuilt. Rebbe is saying, I mean, this is not going to go down with you, Harry. That any Kohen could never drink, that, you know. could never drink anything. <laughs> Because maybe the Beit Hamikdash will be rebuilt. He doesn't know which day his mishmar is going to be on. He doesn't know which Beit Av he's part of. So at, at, you could be on tonight, right? That's what Rabbi says. So maybe, <laughs> maybe a person's maybe a kohen has has no uh, has no possibility. <clears throat> so. Takanato, the reason why he's allowed to drink is because Kalkanato. Is because since it's been so long, since the Bedouin Dash has been rebuilt, so we don't have to assume and stop the guy from drinking wine because who knows, you know, who, who, why should we, why are we obligated to assume that it will be, it will be back on today? Amar Abaye, Abaye taught, Kiman Shatua Idna Kohani Khamre. According to whose opinion, Right? Are Kohanim allowed to drink wine today? Answers the Gemara. Kirebi. According to Rabbi Yehuda. Because Rabbi Yehuda, as we just said, as we just said, um, uh, is, what's it called? Is he, He's the one that allows. Now, <clears throat> second. Now, we see from Abaye that the way he understood the, the, the Mishnah that we just read was that the rabbis were saying this law not just in the time when the Beit HaMikdash was around, but even nowadays when the Beit HaMikdash is destroyed. So if you knew exactly what day you were supposed to be on, you wouldn't be allowed to drink even though the Beit HaMikdash doesn't exist. Rebbe comes along and says, if that's the case, so then no one should ever be able to do it because, you know, we don't know what's going to be. They might change the law. They might change the Mishmah. They might change... So Rebbe does away with the whole thing. So Abaye says, according to the the to the Chachamim, you the uh, the Kohen would not be allowed to drink, and therefore this idea that a Kohen doesn't have any time when he's not allowed to drink is following the opinion of Rabbi of Rabbi Yehuda. Let's carry on. Anshe Mishmar, ve'anshe Ma'amad, asurin lesaper lechabes b'chamishi mutarim nekwala Shabbat. The Kohanim of the Mishmar of that segment of uh, of the Kohanim. And the people of the Ma'amad, both of them, right, are the halakha is they're not allowed to get to cut their hair, ulichabes, and to do their laundry um, uh, do, during during uh, their watch. Okay, but when it comes to Yom Chamishi, Lichvod Shabbat, the halakha is they're allowed they're allowed to do they're allowed to cut their hair and they're allowed to do the laundry. Gemara asks, my tama, how come? Why would we say that they're prohibited? If you remember when we learned this, someone asked me. Why should they be prohibited from cutting hair and watch? I said, but Gemara is going to discuss it. Why? What would the reason be? How come 
Just because they're going to do service, they can't cut their hair. I understand if you're going to be, you drink wine, it's hard to sober up, right? Uh, you, you can't sober up on demand. When it comes to this, however, washing the hair, washing their clothing, cutting the hair, what's the problem? Amar Rabbi Barachana, Rabbi Barachana says, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, in the name of Yochanan Kedesh, you can sue the Mishmatan, Kishahem Menuvalin. We're worried that we, they shouldn't enter into their time when they, they didn't take a haircut. So very similar to the laws of Yom, of Yom Tov. On Yom Tov, we say, you're not allowed to get a haircut on Cholam Moed. Why? Because if we tell you you're allowed to get a haircut on Cholam Moed, when are you going to leave it to? Cholam Moed. <laughs> what will happen then? You're going to go into the holiday, the first holiday, you're not going to have a haircut. If we tell you you can't have a, holiday, a haircut on Cholam Moed, what does everyone make sure to do? Everyone makes sure to get a haircut before. Therefore, if we don't allow you to have a haircut on the time of your Anshe Mishma, Anshe Ma'amad, that will cause you to have a haircut before, which means that if you go into your Avodah, you're going to go in already having a haircut. You're going to go in already yeah. having your clothes washed. Tanu Rabbanan. Melech mistaper b'chol yom. A Jewish king, when does he have his haircut? Every single day. I did not know this was a thing until I found that in England, that English footballers have their haircut every day. What's the kind of you know that? Players? They cut a small amount. Yeah, that's what they do. The players? The players. These super, you know, the one, that's what they always, their hair is gelled for the game. It's always, you know, they're all, exactly. So this is a thing. And obviously, like I said, they're cutting minuscule amounts. They're trimming, they're styling. A man that cuts his hair every single day. Kohen Gadol, I don't know what he does if he's bald. Kohen Gadol, Kohen Gadol, Me'erev Shabbat, Erev Shabbat. He cuts his hair every week. Kohen Ediot, Echad L'Shloshim Yom. Once every 30 days. Now the Gemara says, okay, what does this mean? Me'erev Shabbat, 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 Me'erev Shabbat,
to tell you not one halakha, but two halakhot. We learn the halakha of the length of Nizirut from this gematria. We learn the length as well of a Kohen Hedyot when he cuts his hair, his obligation to cut his hair also comes from this gematria, Bigzira Shava. So you see that there are gematriot that are um, obligatory to the point that they govern a deoraita. Okay? So it's true that you can't just decide you're going to make up whatever gematria you want, you can make gematria you want. Like as an example, it says, Neze elokav al rosho, he's going to have the crown of Hashem on his head. Neze elokav gematria Yankees. <laughs> if you count the kolel and you add seven and whatever. Can't do that. Once there was a great saying that I remember they said over, they said, a gematria is as good as the one who says it. You're a tremendous Tamil Chacham. You know Torah inside out, backwards and forwards. That gematria comes from your understanding of Torah. You're using an app to find the gematria that matches the, the name of the Chatan and Kala. Hazaku Baruch. That doesn't have import. But you see over here that there are gematriot that were handed down, <clears throat> um, that were taught and that was seen and that were learned uh, with halachic ramifications as well. Is the gematria here where they start from, or it's Tolashe, following Moshe de Sinai, and it's the smacht of the Torah and Moshe de Sinai? If it was uh, Torah, halacha Moshe de Sinai, then the Gemara would say halacha Moshe de Sinai. The Gemara does not say that. The Gemara says it comes from the gematria. We don't have sometimes where you have halacha Moshe de Sinai, but you have a smacht out in the Gemara, where it says from this pasuk or from that pasuk. So the Gemara would like, say halacha Moshe de Sinai, the yeah. asmeche, yeah. and then we'll be somech on the... On the on the pasuk. Okay. Let's carry on. Amale Rav Papa le'Abaye. Rav Papa said to Abaye, V'dil ma'achi ka'marachmana. Maybe what the pasuk meant to say is different. Lo lirabu kilal. Maybe, right, when the uh, when the Gemara, we just quoted this pasuk uh, in Yechezkel, right? And the pasuk in Yechezkel said that actually... Second. Okay, so there's there's two ways to understand this. Let's look at Rashi first for one second. Rashi says, "Lo lerabu kelal." You see that? Ela yistaperu. It's five lines on the bottom in Rashi. Lo lerabu kelal. Ela yistaperu bechol yom. Deachi mashma. Upera da'inu shloshim lo yishalechu, ela yigalechu. It says that they, right? What does Rashi explain? Mm. That they, doesn't say yishalechu, it says yigalechu, they should cut it. So what, what it would seem to be indicating is that they should always be cutting their hair. Or at the very least, according to another way to understand the Gemara, that they should be cutting it within 30 days. They should not allow it to grow at all. Pera lo Yigalechu. The Gemara answers, Amale, Yavi Katav, Lo Yishalechu, Pera, Kedeka Amrat. If it would say, They shall not grow their hair, fine. Hash Dechtibu, Pera, Lo Yishalechu. Right? If it, if it said, Lo Yishalechu, Pera, let them not grow their hair, then it's indicating that they can't grow it, which means they should cut it consistently, constantly. Upera, Lo, but since it says, Upera, Lo yishalechu, which means, and their long hair, lo yishalechu, should not grow, indicates pera lehevi, sheluchehu de lo yishalechu. You understand? Yeah. The way you phrase it matters if you put the word pera first or pera second. So in other words, if it says lo yishalechu pera, it means don't let it grow. That's right. indicating always cut it. Yeah. But if it says pera, your long hair, lo yishalechu, don't, don't let it grow, that means that it already said that your hair was long. Very it just good. means don't let your long hair grow more. Mm -hmm. So it's in, it's it's instituting a period of time mm -hmm. where the hair is going to grow, and therefore yeah. that's why the Gemara assumes that it's a thirty day period and not less. Okay. But why is it not starting from the end? What do you mean? Meaning you, you, you rotate it. You said Kohen need to like instruct. You said Kohen need to to, to cut his hair. 
such as us. So by that you 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 avoid the. Here they say how things develop. If you rotate it, you said, okay, Cohen allowed to, he need to cut his, he not allowed to be paid. Rav Papa is not following the, the opinion from the, from, from the Gemara before. Because the Gemara before said, this is how many days it goes. It goes like this, because of Gzera Shava, there's no question to ask. Mm. But Rav Papa is asking without the understanding of Rav Matna. Mm. He's saying, where did this idea 30 come from? Mm. He's challenging. He says it Got should it. be zero. Mm. Answers the Gemara, no, there has to be an amount. Mm. But the Gemara doesn't say what the amount is. It just is contradicting the fact that Rav Papa, or or explaining that Rav Papa, why Rav Papa's question is not a question. Okay. So a kohen is allowed to grow up to thirty days, but not more than thirty days. No, no kohen idiot. Kohen idiot, exactly. So now, it's, okay, it seems like the, uh, he understands it, understands it a little bit differently. Like the whole machlok is if it's twenty nine days or thirty days. Yeah, that's what I said. There's two opinions yeah. as to what Rav, the, what we were trying to achieve with Rav Papa. The first opinion is that Rav Papa was trying to get the kohen to cut every single day, mm-hmm. right, and not have any growth whatsoever, right. and and asking how come that's not the case in the pasuk. But the other opinion is no, it wasn't saying thirty days. It was just saying not up to thirty days. So he was asking one less than what it was that you would that you would ask before. Okay, Gemara continues. If that's true, even though now the Beit Hamikdash is no longer around, this halacha should also be uh, should also be um, in existence, right? Why? And this is so interesting. When it comes to the king, when it comes to the Kohen Gadol, the reason for their the the uh, hair cutting time was based on the reality that they were in. So the king needed to cut every day because people were going to see him. The reason why Kohen Gadol once a week because of the Mishmarim, they were going to see him when they came. Each day they should see him always fresh. So it was based on the, the work in the temple. The reason for 30 days by the Kohen was a Gzera Shabbat from Nazir. If that's the case, so then that should also be now. Because it wasn't about when they were serving, not serving. So even if there's no service in the temple, you still have that Gzera Shabbat. It's the Gemara, Dumya Dishtu Yeyai. No, the long hair of the Kohen was compared, was connected to Shtu Yeyai, because those two were put together in the Pasuk. Mash in the in in Yecheskel. Mash Shtu Yeyai, just like Shtu Yeyai. Bizman Biyahu Dasu Shlo Bizman Biyah Ba Ashare. It was only during the time when a person's going into the Beit Hamikdash, but not not during the time Beit Hamikdash. All right, never mind, not even in a time with the Beit HaMikdash's existence. Av mm-hmm. also over here too, the concept of cutting the hair is only related to the time of the Beit HaMikdash, but now, when there's no Beit HaMikdash, the Kohen is allowed to grow a mullet, no problem, <laughs> although that might stop him from fulfilling his other obligation, such as finding someone who's willing to marry him. Okay, jokes. The Gemara continues. V'ha Tanya, the Breita says, Rebbe, Omer, Rebbe says, Omer, ani kohanim asurin l'shtot yayin le'olam. Rebbe says, what do you mean? According to this, it would turn out that a Kohen should be a sewer to drink forever. Why? Because at any moment, the Beit HaMikdash could be rebuilt. We could restart the Mishmarim process. Not only that, there could be an inaugural service that would require all the Kohanim to be involved. So therefore, every Kohen should really not be allowed to drink at all, except, as we said earlier, his, uh, his what's it called? His, uh, the, 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 the thing that helps him drink is based on the fact that uh, he, it was disrupted, like we said earlier, that the Beit Hamikdash has not been built for so long. According to whose opinion are they allowed to drink uh, uh, today in today's day and age? And the Gemara answers Kirebi. According to the opinion of Rebbe, Michlal, this turns out that according to Abaye, the way Abaye understood uh, this idea. And therefore, posited that we were learning according to Rebbe, Michla de Rabbanan Asre. According to the Rabbanan, they say that it's Asur to drink wine, even though there's no Beta Mikdash now. So uh, that's the case. If that's the case, so what did we say? We connected long hair to drinking wine. If drinking wine and long hair go together, according to the Rabbanan, that say that you're not allowed to drink during today, even, even during today, so therefore we should also, a Kohen should also um, be allowed to. Uh, uh, should should not be, should uh, should, uh, should n- be allowed should not be allowed to grow his hair and be restricted from growing his hair long just like he's restricted from drinking wine. 
Answers the Gemara, no. What's the reason why he can't drink today? The reason is because we're, we are worried, we're concerned, actually we are hopeful, that the Beit HaKadosh will be re- rebuilt, and then he will need him for service, and then he'll be drunk. He won't be appropriate. No, here, if we need an abundance of Kwani, no problem. Grab uh, your local, uh, you know, um, uh, Oster... Uh, uh, things the brand name is Oster, right? Grab your local Oster hair cutting machine. Thirty seconds, you're good to go. So the Kohen can instantly cut his hair and be fit to therefore do it. So therefore, we don't have to worry about the case on the maybe. Okay? So too, he can go take a little nap. If he takes a little nap, uh, his wine will leave him. He'll be able to enter the Beit Hamikdash. Like Rami Bar Abba. If a person walks for one meal, which is a, a certain amount of uh, a distance, a little shorter, I believe it's a little shorter than a mile, 2,000 amot, 3,000, 4,000 feet, a little shorter than a mile, <clears throat> that dissipates the wine, or if he takes a short nap. So therefore, he could take a short nap, and then he could be, he could, he could be good to go. The Gemara answers, Lav mi itma ala, did we not say this about that answer? When he drank a shiur rivi'it, a small amount, three ounces of wine, then that works. All right. But if the guy drank six bottles of wine, then even if he walks the other sometimes that actually will make him drunker. And the sleep will actually uh, make him even more drunk. And therefore, since there's no quick way to be able to get him out of this, right? Therefore, we're still in a situation where uh, if the Beit HaMikdash is rebuilt, it will be an issue. The Gemara now continues and says another answer uh, why the rabbis, even though they said it's not, he's not allowed to drink wine, would still be allowed to do this. When you drink wine, it invalidates the the the, Beit, the, the Abu Dhabi, the Beit HaMikdash, Right? Because they're working on without the wine's influence. Gazru Bahe Rabana. The rabbis also said, we're making Gezerah for nowadays, even though the Beit is not here. Peru Rosh, de lo mechale avodah. Right? Even though you're not supposed to do the avodah with long hair. But it doesn't ruin the avodah. La lo gazru be rabanan. Um, the Rabbanan did not make a Gezerah. Let me just explain what that means. That means that even though it's Asur for the Kohen to grow long hair during their time of avodah, that's his personal isur. It's a isur on him. But the avodah that he does, if he has long hair, is not a pasul. The, the, the korban works. So therefore, in an extreme scenario, where he would have to be here, he would have to go to work, it would not ruin the avodah. It would just be that he has an isur. But on that isur, he would be honest, because he didn't expect the Beit HaMikdash to be rebuilt today. Maybe he's achra'i on the fact that he didn't expect the Beit HaMikdash to be rebuilt today. If, when we're supposed to be However, therefore, the Chachamim would not have made that Gezerah. Okay, let's continue from here uh, on Wednesday night.